the path of knowledge is the way to jannah the path of knowledge is the way to jannah jannah alhamdulillah rabbil alamin was salatu was salam ala sayyidil mursalin amma ba'du fa a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim as salatu was salam alayka ya rasulallah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya habiballah الصلاه والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى اليك واصحابك يا نور الله the summary of hadith bil khulasa is summary it is mentioned that the one who send one durood in the court of our beloved master then by him doing so allah rabbul izzati wal jalal will send such ten special mercy to the one who sent that durood this is a virtue of durood and salat and salam upon our beloved master i once again welcome you viewers of madani channel to this motivational inspiring silsila the path to knowledge now we still continue it is the same silsila the path of knowledge we in we will now try to look to something which is important as we promised now as we said in the last episode when the going gets higher when the the higher you go the cooler it become now when the car is now in the freeway the more the driver will accelerate so now we have now try to bring some all some proof some all some poems where it is going to be inspiration because why people they don't do things is that they are not motivated i still remember when we were at school that they used to send for us those you know motivational speakers i mean the people who used to you know career guiders you know we used to have career guidance where by people they would be used to be motivated in order for them to uh, undertake a journey on a certain course so you find that most children who were inspired or who were motivated by anything they used to aspire for that thing in most cases we normally talk about knowledge we say it's compulsory knowledge is compulsory knowledge is farad 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 that many brothers they are scared to to seek for to seek knowledge why they think that maybe it's a burden people when they display it they display it as a burden but in this episode we are going to discuss the virtues of knowledge the fadl the fadail of knowledge if we listen to this fadail i think for all ibada that is my research for all ibada there is no any ibada which have got more virtues than knowledge ilm there is no any ibada which have got virtues which have got fadail which have got superiority which have got fruits than knowledge and i want you to bear in mind that as i said it's a principle in this world that the more important the thing the more challenge or the more surrounding the fence on it is we gave that time an example i want to repeat it and try to shed more light on it the example of minerals that you find that one of the most expensive mineral is diamond the diamond mine that is one of the deepest mine diamond is found deep deep under the ground it is a special stone of course but it is found deep deep under the ground you need uh, effort to go deep under the ground that is one of the deepest mineral but you need to go under there but when it comes out people they do it because they know the virtues of diamond that is a precious stone it's a stone whereby if it have got more carats you will sell it easily a symbol of knowledge exactly how it is knowledge is more than this diamond if people they were to know the virtues of the diamonds all these mine mines of diamonds would be i mean converted to be the islamic universities so beloved brothers we once welcome you again 
to this episode. Inshallah is our norm before set the table or before we start to set the speech or the topic today or our lesson today rolling. Let us try to do so by reviving our intention, bearing in mind that we normally hear Amir Ahla Sunnah wal Jama'ah normally quotes that Niyatul Mu'min khayru min amalihi The intention of a believer is better than his action. Let me try to take this opportunity to revive my intention that all these episodes, we must try to deliver them for the pleasure of Allah Rabbul Izzat wal Jalal. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala try to aid us that we must try to check our intention, the one who turns the, the hearts. May he keep my heart steadfast whilst I'm delivering these episodes. You as listener, as we normally said, try to pay attention. Try to listen from beginning to the end. Follow up an episode with an episode. A single rain does not constitute the rain season. So in order for you to benefit, try to follow it up an episode with another episode. So now, going straight to the point in discussion. Today, I want to start with the words of a poet. I did so when I was mentioning previously on the previous episode that in order for you to have an objective discussion, first of all, try to introduce. And after introduction, go to definition. And after definition, go and talk about the merits. We are doing so because this is a golden principle. A poet said, because there are 10 things which I said that we must know for each and every topic or for each and every subject, be it in each and every science. This was you know, composed for sciences, but me, I'm putting it in particular because knowledge is fast. I can call it, it's a science on its own. It's a discipline on its own knowledge. It's very vast. Knowledge is like an ocean. It's like a sea. You won't see its shores. Okay, so they say that there are 10 things which you must know before studying anything. Today, I am going to recite one poet put those 10 things in one three in three verses he summarized all of the, all of them in three verses he said inna mabadi kulli fanni ashara inna mabadi kulli fanni ashara al had wal mawdu'u thumma thamara that is the first rhyming then he goes and says wa fadluhu wa nasabatun wal wadi' wa fadluhu wa nasabatun wal wadi' wal ismu wal istimdadu thumma hukmu sharir then he says in the last stanza, Masailu wal ba'du bil ba'du iktafa wa mandara jami'a haza sharafa. Let us try to explain it a little bit. Inna mabadi kulli fanni ashara. Indeed, the foundation for studying anything, you must know 10 things. Actually, they were referring to the sciences of Islamic study, or let me say any, any science in, in general, but normally this is what you come across if you are about to study usul al-fiqh. They say that the principles laying under each and every discipline is that a student of knowledge must know 10 things be before embarking in any type of knowledge. You must know 10 things. Al-Mabadi, it means the foundation. Kullu. Every funny, every science, every art, fun is an art. Like they say that tafannana walikulli fun rijal. Fun is an art. So here it means a discipline, a science. Ashara, there are ten things you must know. Alahaddu, the first one is alahaddu. What is alahaddu? Alahaddu is the definition, the proper definition. We did that in the previous episode, I'm not going to repeat we did give the proper definition of what is a ilm, what is knowledge. Okay, then from there, wal mawdu'u, mawdu'u, it means the subject matter of that science. Okay, the subject matter of what you are about to science, to study, the subject matter of it. That is al mawdu'u, what is it concerning? Then after al mawdu'u, then we say that thumma thamara, then after that, a thamara is the fruit. Thamara, in Arabic, it's a fruit. Thamaratun, it's a fruit. But what do we mean? The fruit here, it means the benefit which you get from you studying that science. The benefit which you get for you studying that thing. So here in particular, the benefit, the fruits which you get when you study the Islamic knowledge. So today, the episode 
is going to only single out the fruits which one gets when he studied the Islamic knowledge. And I say that if we know these things, I think all of us were going to be inspired that we are going to be talib al ilm the seekers of knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless one and all. Then we say that the, the fourth, al-fadl, the fourth is al-fadl. Al-fadl, it means the merit, you know, the merit of it, the advantage of it, the advantage of you having Islamic knowledge, we are going to mention. Then number five is the nisbah. The nisbah, it means the position it takes from other senses. The position knowledge takes from any other act of worship. What is this position? As I explained that it's shart. It's a condition for each and every act of ibadah. Knowledge is the shart. You won't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that you must have good knowledge. Then number six, al wadr the inventor, the one who invented it. Then number seven, which is not important for us for now, al ismu the, the name of the signs, the name which we give to it. Number eight, al istimdad al istimdad it means the sources where that knowledge comes from. al istimdad you must know al istimdad that which sources which you must rely on if you're a student of knowledge. You must know where to quote from. You know, that's why they say that, inna hadha la ilm, deen. This knowledge is religion. Fangdur amman ta'akhuduna deenakum. You must be away from where you, you are picking your knowledge. You must be choosy from where you're picking your knowledge. And then, of course, number nine, hukmu shari'ah. The hukmu shari'ah, it means it's Islamic ruling. We give the term that, talabu la ilm, faridah. It is farad. Some knowledge are farad for each and every one of us to know before we meet Rabbul Izzat al Jalal. We must know it in this dunya. That's why the dunya is called Darut Taklif. It is the place where we must act, the place of action. And the year after is the place of, uh, of Allah Hisab. So I'm trying to say that we must seek it in this dunya. And its ruling is that some of the knowledge is compulsory, and some of them they are play, praiseworthy. You know, sometimes we can say that some is farad al kifaya, and some the farad al ain. We mention like that. Al masail, al masail. It means the issue which knowledge tackle. It normally tackle the issue of the dunya and the issue of the year after. You know, the maslah, the the, the 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 good. You know, it aims in you know improving. It aims in improving human beings and rectifying it from there, from the mistakes. So that is that in as far as the poem is concerned, which I explained before embuckling on the virtues, because I want people to know what is a virtue. A virtue is something which will inspire you. A virtue is like a fruit which you harvest. Virtues, when we talk about the virtues of knowledge, they say that knowledge is like a garden. So when we talk about virtues, we are talking about the fruits which you get there and there when you studied knowledge. The fruits which you get there and there you know, you want to harvest tomorrow. That is the only, that is the only field you plant now and you harvest now. Respected viewers of Madani Channel, let us now try to listen to the virtues of knowledge. And first of all, before I start, let me say, ala ilm, knowledge, that is the thing in this dunya, whereby you plant it now and you harvest there and there. If you plant a tree in the orchard, you will harvest after some time, but knowledge you harvest there and there. And, you know, beans, a, a, a bean flower, a bean, a bean plant, rather, if you plant bean, a bean, this beans will come out. Okay, when it starts to come out, that bean, that sheath which contains the, the knob of the beans inside, the knob will be inside. I mean, that is the knob of the beans that will be inside. Right. The more it starts to grow, that is the, the sheet with the, with the knobs of the bean inside, it will start to bend. It will start to bend. The more it grows, it starts to bend. That the, the bean or the peas, rather, it will just put also peas, is the same. Why? They say that it is the example of somebody with knowledge. The more you start knowledge, the more you start to bend. It does not mean that you start to move bending, no. It means that the more you study knowledge, the more humble you become. It will make you humble. It will change you. It, you know, the effect of knowledge, you feel it yourself before people start to feel it. That is some of the virtues of knowledge. Imam Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, said that kafa bila ilm sharafa, enough to mention the virtue of, uh, of ilm, enough to mention as a virtue, you know, goodness, the fadl of knowledge, number one. 
I want to start with the Quran, but let me just, you know, this is a, the saying of Imam Ali, let me make it as a kitten razor. It's a kitten razor because I want to start with the Quran. The most important is that we start with the Quran, then the Ahadith. From the Ahadith, we go to the sayings of the Sahaba. From the saying of the as Sahaba, we go to the Tabi'in, tabi from our Imma, from our, our leaders, our pious predecessors. Then we start to quote the Shi'ir, the, the, the poems, you know, the literature, trying to support whatever we say. But the first must be Quran. But this one, I'm not starting with it only. It's only that it's a kitten razor. He said, Imam Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, kafa bila ilmi sharafa. Ilm is enough to mention as a virtue. That even an ignorant man, he claimed to be a knowledge, to be knowledgeable. He, he claimed those people who does not even perfect it, they want to be called also scholars. Those people who are not scholars, they want to be called scholars. Yeah. If you say to an ignorant man that you are a, a scholar, you find they produce, they will make their chest, they, they will pro protrude out their chest in in, in pride. Wakafa bil jahali dhamma, it's sufficient enough to mention ignorance that it is despised. Ayyatabarra man kana fi. That the one who is ignorant will try to defend himself from that name. Nobody who is ignorant wants to take that name. Imam Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Just such wise, such wisdom from him. Now, inshallah, we are going to now to listen to the verses of the Quran. May Allah rabbul izzat wal jalal make us to pay attention. And may he make us from those people, when they listen something, they diarize it, they memorize it. Don't wait for tomorrow, because these verses which I'm going to give here, I'm going to give you reference. The reference from the verse, which surah is it, which verse it is. Some hadith also give you verse, uh, what you call this, which book is that hadith found, or hadith number what, with the publication of that book. Most of the books, you know, Maktabatul Madina. Rabbul Izzat wal Jalal is saying in Surah Al Imran, that is the name of the Surah. Shahid Allahu annahu la ilaha illahu wal malaikatu wa ulul ilmi qa imam bil qisti la ilaha illa huwa la azizul hakim. Respected viewers of Madani Channel, that is the verse which is going to, we are going to start with in the next episode. We are going to focus only on it, on the next episode. We are going to explain this verse. We are going to try to clarify some Arabic terms and we are going to check it and try to explain to it because in this verse, there are many sub minor virtues of knowledge which we can derive only from this verse. We can derive a lot of virtues from the fact that Allah Rabbul Izzat wal Jalal made the people of knowledge to be witness. We can derive many things. That is a verse which can make you to wake up to show the importance of how knowledge it is. The importance of knowledge. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the people of knowledge in, in the picture when he was talking about the importance of the fact that there is none worth of worship. Okay, there are some many, many sub-virtues which we are going to derive from this verse. Number one, istishhaduhum duna ghayrihim min al-bashar. Allah Rabbul Izzat wal Jalal selected only the ulama for this witness. Only them, not the worshippers, not the people who give zakah, not the people who go to hajj, only the scholars, al-ulama'u, only these people of knowledge. And when we are talking about al-ulama'u, I'm not talking about al-ulama'u al-tibbi. We are only talking about the Islamic scholars. Because you find that in this verse, it's a proof also that when you talk about knowledge which Allah refers to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what, what is the witness are they bearing unto? What is the witness which this malaika, which Rabbul Izzat al Jalal, which the people of knowledge are bearing witness to? They are bearing witness to that. There is none worth of worship besides Allah. That is the knowledge which they have got. The knowledge, the ma'arifa of Allah, Rabbul Izzat al Jalal. Of course, the ma'arifa of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is they. You know, Al-Muqaddar, it's, it's mafuhum. Because we know that the kalima, indana, according to us, Al Sunnah al Jama'ah, we all the Muslim, Bil al Jama'ah, is La ilaha illa Allahu Muhammadu Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. With this part of the verse, we are going to stop there. Insha'Allah, in the next episode, we are going to start exactly with this verse because I'm not yet done in explaining and expounding what this verse contains 
for the students of knowledge what this verse contains for those who aspire to be the students of knowledge. I want, it is my wish that starting from now that all of the viewers of Madani Channel, if we become the students, you know, the journey of a thousand mile, it starts with a one step. Sallu ala al Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. The path of knowledge is the way to Jannah. The path of knowledge is the way to Jannah.